This is the Sonos Sub Mini, and it might be one of the most important products they've ever released. It's designed to work in tandem with some of their entry-level soundbars to deliver the best audio experience possible on a smaller budget. There's no arguing that soundbars deliver a wider soundstage than the speakers built into your TV. However, at the expense of convenience, they're typically lacking on the low end, resulting in poor quality bass, which can subtract from the overall listening experience. Now, Sonos already sell a subwoofer, but it's much larger and more powerful than the Sub Mini, meaning it's not really ideal for more compact spaces, and the ecosystem has desperately been in need of a smaller, cheaper subwoofer for a long time. A quick disclaimer before we get into the thick of it. Sonos sent me this product for free to make a video review, along with one of their soundbars to ensure that I could have an experience that best represents what the Sub Mini is capable of. However, they don't get any input on this video, nor do they get to preview it before it's uploaded. That being said, the Sub Mini has definitely been on my radar for a while now. In my recent living room tour, I talked about how much I've enjoyed using the first generation Beam within my TV setup, and the prospect of building a system around that product was really exciting. However, with the Sonos Sub costing almost double the price of my soundbar, it wasn't really a feasible option for me. I've been using the Sub Mini for about a week now, so I'm excited to finally share some of my thoughts. Like most Sonos products, the Sub Mini has a distinctly clean and modern design, with very little branding and no obvious buttons on show. In contrast to the larger Sub, it uses a cylindrical design, which I'm personally a really big fan of. The furniture in my living room creates a lot of straight lines, so the curves created by the Sub Mini's design helps to balance this. However, I have to admit, it does look a little bit like a dustbin at a glance. The Sub Mini is available in white or black with a matte finish. Despite the understated design, I'm sure most people will choose the colour that looks the most discreet within their home. I was given the choice between the two, but went for the white version of the Sub Mini to match my wall paint and media unit. It is worth highlighting that the internal structure is black on both options, giving the white version this two-tone look. I actually really like this because it draws attention to the fact that it is actually a speaker, but this will of course come down to personal preference. Despite the name, I was actually quite surprised by how big the Sub Mini is. I guess it has to be to effectively move the air required for lower frequencies, but if your TV setup has limited space, I'd recommend keeping this in mind. All of the I.O. is located on the bottom of the speaker, contributing to its minimal design. I really appreciate the power cable being colour matched to the speaker. It's a small consideration that I think should be standard practice for all tech products. Once you follow the setup process in the Sonos app, which I also want to commend for being so straightforward, the Sub Mini connects wirelessly to your soundbar, meaning the power supply is the only cable you'll actually have on show. One of the things that impressed me most about the Sub Mini is how well it blends with the audio from the soundbar, despite using a wireless connection. There's a lot that could potentially go wrong with this type of integration, but it's never too loud or overbearing, and there's no discernible audio delay that would suggest poor latency between devices. The Sonos app also offers a feature called TruePlay Tuning. This technology uses your phone's microphone to figure out how the frequencies travel within the room, before analyzing the results to fine-tune your Sonos products for the best listening experience possible. I guess the idea behind this is that every room is different, and factors such as how big the listening space is, whether it's got much furniture, or even if it's carpeted or not, are all going to impact how the frequencies travel. So the Sub Mini creates an audio profile that is specifically tailored to you. The app also gives you access to an adjustable EQ, allowing you to further tweak the sound to your preferences. The amount that you set the sub level really comes down to personal preference and how much you like your neighbors. I found anything above plus six to be a bit too obnoxious, so I've had the level set to plus two, but I've also increased the treble slightly to make sure vocals and dialogue don't get lost in the mix. Inside the speaker are a pair of six inch drivers which directly face each other. So this is actually done to cancel out vibrations and helps to prevent frequencies from propagating throughout the cabinet, providing cleaner and distortion free audio. When you connect these sub mini, it basically tells the soundbar, you focus on the mids and higher frequencies, I'll take care of the low end. I guess I was expecting a room rumbling level of bass, but the actual experience is much more subtle and Sonos has done a really good job of tuning the sub mini to provide a balanced experience. It's not until you switch off the Sub Mini that you realise how much you are missing without it. Not only can you hear more out of your audio, but you can also feel it. Music has more depth and character, and dialogue in movies and TV shows sounds fuller and more true to life. There's been a couple of times where I've caught myself feeling really immersed in a particularly intense scene. The lower frequencies that underpin a lot of thrillers and action films are usually lost when using a soundbar alone, and I was surprised by how much pronounced bass contributed to these types of scenes. 
I never really considered myself an audio enthusiast, but during my time with the Sub Mini, I've definitely discovered a new appreciation for a full range of audio coverage, and I'm not sure if I'd be able to go without a subwoofer again in future. Even though the Sub Mini is cheaper than the Sono Sub, it's obviously still quite expensive, so at this point you're probably wondering whether I think it's worth the cost. I really like this product. If I'm being completely transparent, I think it should be a little bit cheaper, but it does live up to its promise of providing big bass from a small package. And for me personally, it's the perfect addition to my living room setup. Whether it's right for you really comes down to what sort of audio you regularly listen to. If you're someone who listens to a lot of music with a heavy bass line, or if you really enjoy the true cinema experience, then this speaker is definitely gonna put a smile on your face. It also depends what products you already have within your media setup. The Sub Mini works best as a companion to the Beam or Ray, so if you have the Arc, which is Sonos's flagship soundbar, you'd probably be better off opting for the larger Sub, just to ensure that the audio is evenly matched. Overall, I definitely recommend the Sub Mini. It really does transform your audio, and adding it into your speaker setup is a pain-free process that makes it easy to see why the Sonos ecosystem is considered such a compelling option for home theater use. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my living room tour, where I talk about all the tech I've used to create my perfect TV setup. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.